G'day cocktail lovers, hope you've been keeping well. Certainly not an easy thing to do in these strange times we find ourselves in, but I'm glad to see you joining me here again today. I'm keeping up the Milk Punch Monday trend. I don't know how many Mondays in a row I'll do this, but I'll do it at least semi-regularly. This one, this is science. We're doing science today because uh, if you have watched my other Milk Punch, Milk Clarified cocktail recipes, you'll know one of the bits of advice I give. A lot of the recipes you'll find online say when you add your drink to the milk, you need to leave it for 12 hours or 24 hours. I've actually seen one that said two days. And I never have because the curds, if you do it right, the curds start to form within half an hour to an hour at most. And that's usually when I start the filtering process. So I thought, you don't need to. But then I had this nagging doubt. What if you do? What if it makes a difference? I'd never had the patience to leave it for overnight, for, you know, for a full day and uh, to see if it's different. So I'm going to make a drink now and I'm going to make it twice. I'm going to make it once for camera, but I'll make it twice. Uh, once I will leave the curdling mixture for 24 hours. Then when that's ready, I'll make it again and do the curdling the way I normally would like. Start the filtering half an hour to an hour after I add the drink to the milk. And we're going to see A, if it looks different, B, if it tastes different. Because my initial thought was it wouldn't, but I shouldn't act like I know everything. I'm going to test this. So uh, with a lot of traditional milk punches, there's very bold flavors in them because the milk uh, clarifying process does tame the flavors down. So I'm, I'm just making this one up. It's kind of a bit like one I made recently, but I'm just riffing and I'm going for a few bold flavors. I'm calling this an island spice punch because it's got a few interesting and spicy flavors in it. Starting with some Batavia Arak, uh, an Indonesian rum, which I recently found. I'm gonna, sorry, I just wanted to do the uh, stopper popping uh, near the microphone because I, I love that sound. So this is my first ingredient. I just realized I didn't have my jigger. It's right here. So I'm going to do two ounces or 60 mils of Batavia Arak. Next up, take the stopper out of another one. This is another rum. This is an Australian rum in a circle. This is from uh, Queensland, from the Beanley Distillery. This is a uh, very overproof rum, 75.9% or over 151 proof. Like I said, putting some bold flavors, making it a bit punchy. I am going to do one ounce or 30 mils of the overproof pot still rum. Now I'm going to add a few things to give some contrasting and herbal notes. This one, one of my favorites, another Australian beverage, Okar Gold, they call it their Outback Liqueur. As an approximation, this is in the same family as Yellow Chartreuse and Suze. Uh, it is a really nice herbal liqueur, and I'm going to add one ounce or 30 mils of the Okar Gold. I'm also going to add some Amaro. I have a couple of Amari. This one's actually just called Amaro. Uh, it's actually not that bad. That made me, once I got into Amari, uh, that immediately made me suspicious. Wait, I bought that one and it was cheap, uh, but it is not bad. It is an Italian Amaro and I'm going to add just half an ounce or 15 mils of Amaro. In the same family as Amaro, but a very much its own thing, Fernet Branca. Disappointingly, doesn't have a stopper, has a screw top, so we don't get a fun noise, but it is a very interesting drink. It's got very sort of menthol notes in it. It's uh, it, it's quite unique, and it's, an, it's definitely an acquired taste, but I'll be adding just half an ounce or 15 mils of Fernet Branca. The final booze element is another screw top bottle, and this is Pimento Dram, or Allspice Dram, uh, made by quite a few people around the world. Uh, traditionally, the uh, pimento or allspice berry uh, makes for a very interesting flavor because it was known as allspice because it tasted like all spices. Very strong cinnamon, anise, uh, nutmeg, and even other flavors in there. And because it has such a strong flavor, again, I'm adding just half an ounce or 15 mils of pimento dram. Another reason I decided to make this rum focused and very punchy punch uh, is as an excuse to use some cinnamon syrup I made. Uh, if you tend to buy store-bought sugar syrups, very much encourage you to make your own because a simple sh sugar syrup is just 50% sugar, 50% water, but you can experiment with that. What I did to make this uh, was 
water, 50% sugar, but I split the sugar between uh, white caster sugar and an unrefined coconut sugar to make it a bit more interesting and then put it on the stove and raised it to a simmer and there was also cinnamon and a vanilla pod in there and I left that for a while to infuse and I got uh, a really tasty homemade cinnamon syrup and I'll be adding a full ounce 30 mils of cinnamon syrup to the drink. For the final touch we need an acid content to do a milk punch because you need acid content in your drink to curdle the milk and also this drink could just do with some fruit juice to provide a bit of balance to those boozy and herbal notes. Uh, I am going to use pineapple juice in this case, it seemed very fitting for this tropical feel in this drink and I'm going to add 2 ounces or 60 mils of pineapple juice. You can see this is not an overly appealing colour this drink and one of the great things about the milk clarification process is it will look much better uh, but that's before it actually looks worse because I'm going to add it to the milk uh, and the milk will curdle which is not a great visual let me just put this down I'm just going to gently stir to make sure it's incorporated and that's it essentially, it kind of looks like caramel milk at the moment. I'm going to set this aside for as long as it takes for me to see some separation. That will be somewhere between half an hour and an hour and then I will start the filtration process. It's very simple, I'll just be pouring it through a coffee filter and we'll see what comes out the other end. About an hour has passed and our concoction looks like this now. Uh, it's all separating curds and I think it's separated enough that I will be able to do the clarification process now. So it's relatively simple, if time consuming, we pour this into a funnel that has a paper coffee filter in there and it's going to run through there. Initially it'll run through comparatively fast because the curds haven't settled. Again, fun little fact, it's not the filter paper that does the hard work, it's the milk curds. So the curds have to settle to the bottom to be really filtering the drink. So I'll let a bit run through and then tip it back through again so it comes out completely clear. I might even run the entire thing through more than once to get it as clear as I can. I'll come back and I will show you the two milk clarified drinks. The one that I let sit for 24 hours and the one that I let sit for about an hour. We are now at the final hurdle of our science experiment. Yes, I'm not getting drunk, this is for science. So I'm going to show you, uh, I, I was dripping this through into these glasses. They look the same. The reason I'm showing you in these glasses, I'm not drinking from these, I put some on ice uh, so I can uh, drink it, um, but it looks different with ice. But yeah, okay, the first observation, this one, I let it sit for 24 hours. This one, I let sit for about an hour. They look very much the same. So the only question is, do they taste different? Now, I used some of my specky clear eyes, but I absolutely, I absolutely screwed up. Uh, I had this one big bit of ice, I wanted to break into two bits, and one bit's only half as big as the others. I really screwed the um, thing up. So. This one looks much lighter than this one. It's just because it's got a huge bit of ice in it. That's why I wanted to show you the ones without the ice because this looks much lighter. But without the ice, they look the same. But maybe they taste different. Maybe they taste different. Um, I think if they were going to taste different, the one that I left sit for 24 hours would taste milder. Um, so I'm going to taste it first. Let's see. Ooh, that is, that's really good. Um, uh, yeah, no, ooh, yeah. Putting those various Amaro, Amari in there, that is really good because it's got this uh, light sort of fruitiness from the wine content. There's a tiny, tiny little bit of bitterness on the end, but compared to uh, the uh, lemon, uh, uh, blah, blah, I don't even remember what I called it, but the previous um, quite complicated rum uh, milk punch I made, this is a much lighter taste. But does this one taste lighter as well? Mmm. 
Okay. This one maybe tastes a bit more like alcohol. Mmm. I'm going to have to do a slight more comparison. Mmm. Mm, it's hard to tell if this is just psychological, but I think there is a slight difference in the taste. Namely, I think the one that I let uh, actually curdle for just an hour tastes slightly more like alcohol. They both taste really light. They're, they're an incredibly pleasant flavor. Again, when you look at what I made, it's like, well, it was a couple of sorts of rum and a couple of amari and <laughs> a pineapple juice. And it's just its own thing. Like it's. That's the funny thing when you make a milk punch, it's very hard to pick out the individual flavors. It becomes a whole different thing. Mm. Often when you make a cocktail, you can pick out the individual flavors, even if it's quite complex, but. Mm. Yeah, with a milk punch, it just becomes a whole new thing. It's a completely different thing. And it's borderline impossible to pick out individual tastes. This is just a, a new thing. And look, I think there is a very slight difference in the flavor between them. Uh, visually, there was no difference between them. So I will go back to, in the name of science, do you need, when you are making a milk clarified cocktail or a milk punch, do you need to let it sit for 12, 24, 48 hours? Because I've seen a lot of guides online that say leave it that long. My answer is categorically no. Visually, this has made no difference. Taste, it is just possibly made an almost imperceptible difference in taste. It's hard to be objective because I know they're different drinks. So I think my brain's looking for differences between them. Uh, I think possibly if I was just given both of them and not told they were different things, I would think they were the same. They're really good. This is yet another winner of a milk punch. But yes, we've done science, people. We are not alcoholics. We are scientists. We are concocting these drinks in the name of science to understand how these tastes go together. So yes, until I see you again, I hope you take it. And hey, look, if you're stuck with me, if you're learning from me, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, it would be great if you did subscribe and hit the little notification bell so you know when I upload. Uh, failing that, uh, maybe you'll just find me on the interwebs at some point. So until I do see you again, I will say uh, double fisting for the win, viva science, and cheers.